Hi, my name's Holly, I'm a computer science tutor and I run Teach All About It. Today we're going to be looking at a past paper question for the use of the AQA assembly language from the A-level computer science syllabus. We're going to be looking at a real student answer and we're going to be looking at this in depth so that you understand exactly what the examiner is looking for in order for you to get full marks. So let's get started. So in this particular question, we are being asked about the Vernum cipher. And you can see here our student has already highlighted the important information. So they've actually already started using abstraction. So we've got the Vernum cipher. We're talking about plain text, so it must be encryption. Or is it? In actual fact, we're being asked about the AQA assembly language. And for all of these questions, you will be shown the instruction set. So one of the things that you're going to do for this one is that you're going to take everything in that bullet pointed list and you're going to apply it to the instruction set here. So pause the video, have a go fast, and then we'll go and have a look at our student answer. Okay, so here is our student answer, and they didn't get full marks on this, and there's a very clear reason why. Um, and it's not because they have done anything particularly wrong in terms of uh, the instruction set. Uh, their logic is actually really good. It's just that what we're looking for in this particular one is not worth three marks yet. Um, there is a very small tweak that can be made to this, um, and we can get full marks really, really easily. So one thing that I would definitely recommend that you do is to go and have a look at the AQA version of the Little Man Computer. And this is on the Peter Higginson website. Um, it's not actually the Little Man Computer, but it is a representation of your processor um, using all the same kind of things as the LMC, but using the AQA equivalent. Now, again, same thing, we're going to be making sure that we use our instruction set. So let's start off by highlighting what we need to do. So over here, um, we have been told we need to get the character code of the plain text and it is stored in memory. So if we use this, it is stored in memory in location 101. Now we've already highlighted that, so that's great. But we want to know what store is. Um, so it's already stored, so therefore we're going to need to load it. Um, up here is our load, and that means we're going to be using an LDR. Now our student has used an LDR, um, and for that reason, I do believe they're gonna get a mark. However, the next thing to do is that part of the key is then used to encrypt the memory stored in location 102. Now, this is possibly where our student has gone wrong. Um, however, with their logic, it actually works. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this underneath. Um, and underneath, I'm going to have an LDR. And remembering what we've got over here, I'm actually going to use R0. Now, they've used RA, and it's incredibly understandable why they've done that, because you can see up here in our instruction set, it actually uses a D and an N. Um, however, those are meant to be variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our numeric memory locations. So in register 0, making sure we make it a zero, really, really clear. It's not R O, it's R zero. We are taking from 101. Now, the reason I've done this is you can see up here, we've got LDR, RD there, and then memory ref. So load the value stored in the memory location specified by memory ref into register D. So, load the value stored in memory location specified by memory ref. So whatever is in 101 into register D. So in this case, R0. <clears throat> At that point, we've then been asked to perform an XOR using whatever happens to also be at memory location 100. Now, if we look at that one, there is our XOR. 
so perform a bitwise logical x or operation this is masking it is logic masking so perform a bitwise exclusive or operation between the value in register n and an operand and then we're going to store it in register d now this means that what we can do is we can perform an XOR straight away instead of having another uh, LDR. So here we can have an EOR, which is our XOR operation. We need to know where we are storing it. Now we've been told that this is going to go into register D. So let's use R1. And again, make it really clear that it is a one, not an I. Um, and then we need to give it two things. So RN is another register location. So that's where we loaded our previous instruction, R0. Um, and then we are using location 102. So 102. And by putting in that 102, what we are doing there is that we are actually showing that we understand how to use direct addressing. Because to use direct addressing is to point to a particular memory location where the data is stored. We are quite literally directing ourselves to the right location. At this point, we've performed the XOR. It's stored in register, temporary register R1. And then we need to take it and store it into location 103. And therefore, we're going to need to have a store. So at this point, we want to find store up here. We've got an str, I, rd, and then a memory ref. So that means the store, the value that's in register D into the memory location specified. So here we are going to use str for store. The value that's in register D, well, that is currently R1, because that's where we put the outcome of our XOR. And then we're going to place it into the location specified, which is 103. So we have an LDR, an XOR, and a store. We are using our temporary registers, as you see them on the Peter Hickinson website, and then we're also using direct addressing. And that's how we're going to get our three marks. So would you like your question featured in one of these videos? Please do hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. And you can submit your GCSE, IGCSE or A-level computer science questions at www.teachallaboutit.school.